I found out about it during my studies and I thought, oh my God, you know, like if ever we could show there. Because I was always quite a big fan of Antti Lovak, who built this house. So for me, it was quite a, a unique chance actually to, to, to come and show the cruise in this, in this era. I've been always attracted by this environment very much. I like the contrast between the very like roughness, you know, like the, the, the rawness and the roughness of France na French nature and the south of France nature. And also the roughness of how I perceive certain artists that took place here or that, that, that came here very often, like Picasso, Matisse and the ceramists that were kind of uh, invading this environment. But at the same time, link it to Dior, you know, there was like his obsession with uh, bourgeoisie, but at the same time there was his natural attraction to always, you know, like be inspired with nature. I didn't want to make that too literal, so I did not want to take an artist inspiration in, in, in say, I didn't want to say like this is like inspired with Picasso or whatever. It was more the, the kind of environment. I think it was very much an environment uh, uh, kind of feel. Also the idea of uh, skyscapes and seascapes and landscapes and what that could, how that could translate in a kind of abstract way into graphic in the collection. And still linking it to the glamorous aspect of this environment, like all the the Lurex pieces in the collection, for me they are kind of abstractions of, of uh, sunsets or sundowns or landscapes, but still there was a roughness, there was a kind of earthy feel to them, but they are made with these very glamorous kind of Lurex materials. The same way I wanted to make a lot of reference to Christian Dior in a way that it was not so obvious, especially in the architectural aspect of the collection, like a lot of reference to the montors, like the full big montors with the pleating that he did. But we didn't really, I didn't want to get to that kind of weight or impact. I also didn't want to pin down one era, one moment in time. So, you know, like the shoes, you could, you could as well think like punky new wave kind of feel, which I think is so odd to put that in an environment like this. But then they were materialized with a lot of materials that you might think Marie Antoinette, by way of speaking. I think it was interesting to do a lot of different kind of contrast and to try to find the unity more in like a form language or something. But then bring with a lot of, with a different attitude. I think for me it was also new to, to admit that the language that was defined by Christian Dior is such a universal language and it's, such, it's a language that you actually can almost not not respect. <laughs> Uh, you know, like the, 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 the shape of a woman, you know, like the idea of la femme fleur, the idea of the garden. I think over the last couple of years I had to admit that I feel myself also more and more attracted to a certain kind of um, universal, uni, 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 universality, I don't know how you say that, uh, in, in the idea of nature, in the idea of something which is easy to understand. I find that now very challenging and attracting. I think it's then, of course, my nature to still add things, mm -hmm. to still maybe shake it up a little bit or to kind of try things out. But I'm trying to really focus now on the actual woman who has been following uh, the brand for a long time, who has been buying the brand for a long time, see how they move on with it, with the things that I suggest. So on the one hand, I want to hold very much to the heritage. On the other hand, I also want to kind of push, push it.